whosoever will may come. That means whether you're rich or poor, you're welcome here. Whether you are black, brown, or white, you are welcome here. Whether you are male or female, you're welcome here. Whether you are gay or straight, cisgender or transgender, you are welcome here. Your seat at God's table is not up for discussion or debate. It is ever and always yours. You are welcome. You are accepted. And you are held by the God who made you and loves you just as you are. And not as somebody else says you should be. Let's worship together. Mm-hmm. 
right? We're so glad you're here. Welcome, welcome. Hi, Carol. And a lovely lady named Laura. A couple of weeks ago, who told me about your congregation. And this is my first visit, and I thought I'd come and see what it's all about. Welcome. Welcome. All right, thank you. The rest of you are always and always. We have a responsive call to worship. What joy we feel when we are all together to celebrate God's love. God's love flows through our lives. This is what it means to be the body of Christ. This is what it means to be the faithful witnesses to God. Let us rejoice on this day. Lord, we thank you for the blessings you pour on us. Amen.
Your presence is valuable. It takes people to be the body of Christ. It takes every one of you to be our church family. So thank you for your presence. Thank you for being you this morning. And why don't we turn around and say hello to the people that are joining us online. And as you turn back around, say hello to each other. Good morning. 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 Good
that you are keeping your prayers. We have some folks that will come and mention. Uh, we have uh, several people uh, battling cancer. We have uh, uh, Sheila Olson, who's uh, battling and dealing with cancer, as well as uh, Gil, Gil and Pat Wolf. Uh, Gil uh, is battling lung cancer, so we think of them this morning as well. And uh, Anne and John Pickett, um, who uh, battling cancer and heart failure, so please pray for that um, couple as well. Uh, continue to pray for uh, uh, Jamie Clack. He's joining us online, but he's uh, still uh, um, recovering. Um, and uh, please pray for Beth Kuhn. She had her surgery and she's in recovery. Mm -hmm. So she would appreciate the prayers. As well as Judy Westerhold. Uh, she is progressing. She, she was dealing with a severe, severe infection. And uh, she's doing well now. She's doing better. So we'll continue to pray for Judy and continue to pray for John mm -hmm. Adams. And Doc Holly. She's been in and out of the hospital for breathing issues, so we think of uh, Doc this morning as well. And we do mm -hmm. have to uh, sadly announce that Paul Wilson passed away um, this past week. Doug and um, Carol were members of our church. Uh, she passed away this past week after battling an illness for the past uh, two, three months. So we think of okay. Wilson. Yeah. And I'm sure you have some folks on your heart and mind. You can have an opportunity yeah. to share that this morning. Let's pray. God of grace and God of mercy, when life threatens to overwhelm us, we cry out. We cry out for the kingdom of the Lord I pray that we would in every single person that's here, that's listening, all those folks we mentioned this morning would feel your presence. We pray for you to give us a peace that surpasses understanding, that you would calm our fears with the very presence of Christ. Thank you for hearing our prayers, our cries of help, our cries of comfort, wisdom, and healing, and hope, and love, and justice. Hear these many prayers and cries. Hear our prayers of thanksgiving and blessing this morning as well. Lord Jesus, when you call us to follow where you lead us, our hearts rejoice, but our fears sometimes sidetrack us. Open our hearts and open our ears to hear your voice above all others. We pray for your church in this place. Pray for your work throughout the world. Help us at UCC at the Villages to really be the heart of God, be the hands and feet of us. Give us the courage to step out in faith. Help us to stay focused on your love. May your spirit fill us with your power, fill us with your gifts for life and ministry, that we may be a faithful presence of Christ in this world and in our community. This morning, help us to focus on the abundance of grace rather than the scarcity that comes from fear. <laughs> Teach us to be content. Teach us your truth that we may come to know and love and trust that your kingdom will come and your will will be done. We pray for those who were mentioned this morning, those who are grieving, those who need healing, those that need your presence this morning. We also think of those on our hearts. Loving God, thank you for hearing our prayers. May we continue <coughs> our prayers and the prayer that Jesus taught us. How it be thy name, thy kingdom.
like you have been faithful. And all my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able. Rosman, and uh, 
He talks about this epidemic of discontented boredom that we have in our culture, especially among suburban affluent children. And this is his study found that the average five-year-old has two, uh, 250 toys. By the time that child is five years old, the child will have 250 toys. Now, if you do the math, they've only been alive 260 weeks. <laughs> and I'm sure a lot of those toys are from grandparents. And I'm sure that we're going to be spoiling our grandchildren. <laughs> Um, from February of next year. So, um, but it's an interesting thought, contentment. And when we think contentment is something that we could buy or purchase, it eludes us. It escapes us. But what is contentment? If I were to ask you, what is your definition of contentment? What would you say? Well, I would say that what it's not first, it's not apathy, it's not laziness, it's not complacency. For me, contentment is this. Contentment means to be at peace with the present. <clears throat> not complacent with it. So let me just put a disclaimer here. This is not what this message is about, but let me put a disclaimer. There's a lot of things that I'm discontented about in life. When I uh, look at all the injustices, I don't want to be complacent about the injustices. You know, when I look out at uh, how, you know, the LGBTQ community is being treated in Florida, that, that makes me uneasy, discontented. You know, they're made in the image of God. We are all made in the image of God. But contentment brings a peace of mind in the present, not complacency, not apathy. So keep that in mind and think about what your definition of contentment is. Does it mean to be at peace with the present? It actually comes from the Latin word contentus, which means held together or intact. So to be content means that you feel complete. Regardless of what else is going on, you have an inner completeness. Regardless of the situation or circumstances that you find yourself in. You're a whole person, no matter what happens all around you. Nobody can take that away, not even a situation or a circumstance. So think of contentment of, uh, as who you are, who you are becoming. So let's look at this passage of scripture with a, a few thoughts as we just kind of work our through, work through this chapter. And the first thought is this: when I Look at this when I also look at what psychologists says that contentment is a learned behavior. And that's exactly what the Apostle Paul says. I've learned to be satisfied with whatever I have. Now that's an interesting thing. Contentment is something that we are learning, something that we are becoming. That's a hard thing to learn though, isn't it? <laughs> I've learned to be content. Now you can learn the hard way or you can learn the easy way. You can't buy contentment. It's something that you learn, something that we learn. Uh, along those lines, I just found this study done by uh, Daniel and Dasher. They studied a remote group of former nomads, high in the Himalayas. And this was an unreached group, which means this. It's one of like a handful of villages that have no contact with the outside world. So this village of about 200 families have no contact with the outside world at all. No media, no internet, no cell phone, nothing. They're totally isolated. So they studied this village, this group of people, and wanted to see their emotions and uh, how they're different from the world, from other people that have media and that are connected. So they tried to identify the human emotions that are universal. And they discovered that there are some human emotions that are universal. In other words, they're just inherent. 
like joy or embarrassment or shame. They discovered that these, this, these people in this village had the same facial expressions and vocal expressions to identify these emotions. And there was one emotion, you know, that was radically different. It's what we identify as contentment. But they, that group, was interesting. They had, they didn't have the, you know, there was no really equivalent word. The closest word to it I put up there was, was chakshe, which uh, simply uh, means um, full knowledge of something. Or um, not lacking. So they didn't have a direct word for contentment. This is the closest word. It means that knowledge of enough. And so they found this interesting because contentment for us in Western culture is that we find contentment on the outside. So the idea of our word contentment means that we're not going to be content until I have this done, or this done, or that done. For the people in this village, it was more contentment on the inside that the knowledge was enough. They had enough knowledge to be, for our word, contentment. So contentment is something that we learn from the inside, not the outside. So think of it this way. Contentment comes from our relationship to what is going on around us, not our reaction to it. It is the peaceful realization that we are whole and complete just as we are. And that's a learned behavior. So when the Apostle Paul says, I have learned to be content, it's something that he was transformed into, something that we learn. It takes an effort to be content. It takes a lot of effort to be content. I like this. Because one believes in oneself, one doesn't try to convince others. Because one is content with oneself, one doesn't need others' approval. Because one accepts oneself, the whole world accepts him or her. That's something that we learn. That's something that we come to be comfortable in our own skin. In other words, the idea of con uh, contentment is this, is that we become a complete whole person and be complete with who we are. Complete with the, the present situation, the present, present set of circumstances that we find ourselves in. That we're complete as we are. We don't need anything else, or we don't need anybody telling us something else. We're complete. Content. I've learned to be content. And the idea of this, to go back to this village, and they were basically told the contentment for them was that you are the knowledge of enough. You are enough. You are enough. You don't need this or that or this or that. You're enough. The Apostle Paul says this, I've learned to be satisfied whatever circumstances I find myself in. I've lived under all kinds of conditions. I know what it means to be full, to be hungry, to have much, or to have little. All right, so let's just take a second to identify your well-being contingents. Because at the root of contentment for us in Western culture is this. We have, well, in order for me to be content or to feel complete or, you know, whole, I need this, I need that. And I do this. We all do this. Maybe we need a good retirement plan, which is helpful. <laughs> Maybe we need this, or we need that, and then I'll be content. Then I'll feel complete. Maybe we need financial security. Maybe we need you know, everything to go right in our lives before we're content. Well-being contingencies, the ifs of life. Well, 
identify them, and then learn content. It's okay to have goals, but unhealthy attachments of well-being contingencies, we are learning to be very problematic for the human experience. Which means this, it brings us to another thought that I think the Apostle Paul is teaching us. When the, the verse says, I've learned to be satisfied, it means this, I've learned to accept wherever I am and whatever I have at that moment. Amen. So it means this, to accept all our emotions at that moment, to radically accept them. Uh, Henry Longfellow said this, for after all, the best thing one can do when it's raining <laughs> Dance. Sit with it. Close enough. Instead of having well-being contingencies and fighting it, sit with it. Um, sometimes this is a tough practice because we we get very uncomfortable with some of the emotions that come through us, like grief or sorrow or anger or frustration or doubt. We get very uncomfortable with some of these feelings. We, we get antsy and itchy with some of these feelings. But if we can understand that our life, our emotions have a lifespan, and that they will come and go. I mean, we'd rather have joy and happiness and this or that. But if we can learn just to let it rain and to sit with our grief, to sit with our sorrow, to sit with our anger, to realize that we're just complete as we are right now, regardless, that's very empowering. Instead of trying to cling to certain things that we want, we gotta to learn to sit with whatever situation that we find ourselves in. That's what the Apostle Paul is saying, I've learned to accept whatever I have, wherever I am in at that moment, and his experience, whether it was poverty, plenty, all kinds of conditions. I know what it means to be full, to be hungry, to have little, and to have much. Sit with it. In that book, You Pray Love, at some point you got to let go and sit still and allow contentment just to come to you. That's how we learn. Amen. Just let it come to you. Let it become who you are. Our, my last thought this morning is this. He adds, verse 13, Christ gives me the strength to face anything. Now, when you look at your life, you could make a journal of your life, and I'm sure this is all ups and downs. Just like the Apostle Paul. He basically gave, summarized his life in verse 12, ups and downs. And at the end of it, um, he says this, Christ gives me the strength to face anything. Well, if we're understanding what contentment is, contentment is something that we have the power to become. That's basically what he's saying in verse 13. Christ gives me the strength to face anything. Now, to face anything. No matter what happens on the outside, I have the power of divinity on the inside. I'm complete on the inside. To embrace my life, to, to embrace the Christ in me, is empowering. When you come to center yourself and realize that, number one, you're not alone, that you can face anything, but let's face it, there are some things that we can't face on our own. We do need help. Amen. I don't know, I look at, at my life, and we've gone through some challenging situations where I feel like I couldn't even breathe. And yet, though, there was a presence in me that I learned that's in me. And with that presence, I learned to be complete. And that presence was the Christ that gave me the strength when I didn't have that strength. 
It's not a matter of can or can't. It's a matter of the person you're becoming. Contentment, don't think of contentment as just some emotion that's coming and going. Think about contentment as the person that you're becoming. Because Christ is in you. You are the Christ now to this world. Christ gives me the strength to face anything. Amen. You're empowered. I don't know what this week's going to hold. I don't know what the rest of this year is going to hold. But I know this. You're complete. You're whole. Christ is with you. Christ is in you. Amen. Father God, help us to believe that. Help us to believe that we can be content. That contentment is something that we are becoming. Content is someone who we are, and that takes faith, that takes something to learn. Help us on this journey, even this week. Because it's in our experience of living and learning. Give us the faith, the grace, the love to even share that with others this week. Thank you that we have that great assurance and that great promise that Christ is in us. And that brings great hope. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, thank you for joining us. Those of you who are online, thank you for being part of our Sunday morning worship. And those of you who are joining us this morning, we spent some time in prayer. We spent some time in song. We spent some time in word. Now we invite you to spend some time in fellowship. Right after church we invite you to go in. We have some coffee and people brought some sweets. Say a few hellos and, uh, and I'd love to meet you if you're brand new here. So now I pray that the peace of God would be with you all. And also with you. And may that the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ comfort you this week, no matter what this week holds. Amen. And I pray that the power the ministry of the Holy know. Spirit would remind you that no matter what life holds, whether it's full or empty, we have Christ with you. Amen. Let's stand up and let's be dismissed in our song, Let There Be Peace.
Dear God, my heart's always applauded at the end of that service. Yep. Amen. And hallelujah. And I love my pastor. So during the service, I got a phone call from mom that I couldn't answer right away. I went back out to the uh, study and tried to call mom. She didn't answer. Cindy texted me to let me know that dad has been tested positive for COVID. So we can't go there for lunch. Your prayers are much appreciated. Thank you very much, everyone. Hi, Carolyn. How are you? I'm alive. A new look. Alive and kicking. Yeah. I feel like a princess today. Good. <laughs> Thank you, Special Angel. And the brookies have landed. The brookies have landed. Nico got a brookie. I made that last night. Oh, this one? That I made. The brookie I made. And you got my brookie. I made that last night just for you. It's a brookie. It? It's a brownie cookie with a Reese peanut butter cup inside. I saw that on the internet yes. the other day. Yes, my brookie. I made it oh, last night. Oh my goodness. Of course, I, I'm, I'm a little I well known on TikTok, and I, I, I put that out well, there for the whole world to see. Yeah, yeah but it's like, yep, uh -huh, those, I made those last night. Those are the brookies I shared with everybody. Oh my gosh. But I want the grapes, actually. Well, I got I, I got up during the service today for a very important reason. That my mom tried to call me oh. to let me know my dad has been diagnosed with COVID. Oh. Dad's going to be next Sunday is my dad's 95th birthday. Ooh. That's next Sunday. Next Sunday today is my dad's 95th birthday. Yay! <laughs> You're but my, fortunate. My dad was no, I know, but my dad was diagnosed. My, my mom just called because normally we come over for lunch and have have. have we have a tradition of, you know, six weeks in a row, we've just gone over there and had a picnic lunch with them. But we can't come, can't come today because Dad's got COVID. Mm. He'll be okay. I, well, we'll just pray. We will just pray. Mm -hmm. Hello, my dear. You like the crown? Was it, it's also like the medieval what was it, well, like I, 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 like I don't know this this is called cap? this is called the great Gatsby does it bring wisdom it's, no it brings love because okay, the person that. that gave it to me loved me that's why they gave it to me it's Very called good. the great Gatsby roaring 20s pearl and rhinestone yep. headpiece because it's right from the great Gatsby era do, 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 do. well you wear it well thank you thank you thank you Hello, Ben. I saw you come in late or uh, a little bit. Well, I had to leave during the service because my mom called. My mom called because my dad has been diagnosed with COVID. Next Sunday will be my dad's 95th birthday. Be good. Okay, we just all prayers are appreciated. Thank you, my dear. Enjoy. Be safe. Okay. I'm gonna go get my hey. coffee. I, I left her in the service because my mom called. She oh, yeah. called oh, because dad, dad has been, been uh, diagnosed with COVID. Oh. And next Sunday, next Sunday he's 95. Oh, well, yeah, my mom next turned Sunday, 95 next in, in July. Next Sunday, my dad, mom's going to be 95. Oh. Whoa, 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 what? Oh, wow. My dad is. Oh, okay. Hi, Barb. I'm, I'm, I'm doing Sandy okay. Give you a hug. I always need a hug. Well, dear, free mom hugs. I got them for everyone. Especially for mom. Hi, Muriel. Yeah, I got to give a trippy hug here. I'm give a group hug. Rawr. You don't break my glasses. Send you a wave of Hello Kitty crazy love. This, this thing I'm wearing here is a gift a friend gave me. It's called the Great Gatsby Pearl and Rhinestone Headpiece. It's beautiful. It's like, it, it feels like a wig and a crown. Well, 
you know, I've seen something like that, but it, the only yeah. time I've seen it is someone that's had their, lost their hair to oh, cancer. Oh, yeah. I'm going to talk to you briefly. I want to get a talk. Good oh, seeing you, Mary Ellen. Go oh, get them. Hi, right. <laughs> Michael. Yeah. Looking very red today. Very red. My brookies are almost gone. There's only two brookies left. You better get one fast. Yeah, there's my brookie. If you know, there's only two left. I made them last night. Brownies and cookies and greasy peanut butter cups. Oh my! It's a brookie. <laughs> what I want the strawberries. Strawberries. Well, she's doing well, but my mom, my dad needs prayers. My dad, I, I, I left her in church today for a very good reason. My mom called. Yeah. My sister, he's been diagnosed with COVID. And uh, Carver Chase just called to let me know that they got him. But he's in quarantine, and I'm not allowed to come and visit him right now. So, yeah. Oh, dear. I'm hearing my, my dad's in God's hands. And I pray with all of you. Let me know. I will, my dear. Well, we also have that other promise to keep. You need to set a date for us. You said this week we'd set a date. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so I, you know. Cindy is okay. She's having problems with her plaster fence. Well, her feet are hurting her, so she's not walking a lot. I gave her the whole day off yesterday. I said, you ready to go? She said, no. I said, okay. Is that, is that something you have to keep moving? Well yeah, you have to keep moving. If you don't move, your I will. I will. I worry about it. Thank you. Hi, Donnie. You look gorgeous today. Cindy, you I always look because I like to see your outfit. We're the best dressed people. In the oh, well, I ain't arguing that one. Yep, uh-huh. Oh, I'm just eating fruit. Oh. Well, today there's not a whole lot of people come to church, but before church today, in one hour I had over 4,700 people in my home. How many? 4,700 people. Really? What were you doing? What were you showing? Breakfast, makeup, and making a hula hoop. <laughs> I had breakfast. I, see, I made the French toast face mask. That's where I make French toast. I put it on my face. You never heard of that? <laughs> Guess who invented it? I think you did. I did, yes. <laughs> well, see, I, I already invented the, the almond milk and honey face mask. Almond yeah. milk and honey is great for your face. Okay, yeah, they're all Then they're you all. add an egg to that, stir it up. Oh my God, it's, it's French toast face. Uh -huh. I made that since I was eight years old, nine years old. So you put a piece of bread in there, put it on your face. The eggs will tighten your skin. Yeah. The, uh, the almond milk gives me the nutrients I need. Honey heals and soothes your skin. This is what these things do. And I use bread to put it on. It, it's silly as all get out. Everyone laughs their hand off. So I did that earlier. Yeah. Okay. And then, you know, it's like, okay, now it's time to take it off. I dropped that live. Right? So, and then I came back. Enjoy and that. Then, then I came back. I dropped the live. Yeah. That live had like, you know. 2,000 people or whatever. I dropped that live. I came back. I washed my face. I came back and I had. I ate my breakfast. Yeah. I did my makeup and I made a hula. You've That's what I did. Morning. I had a busy morning. But the most positive, most thing I need to say is, please pray for my dad. Uh, well, you might have seen me leave the church service. My mom called me. I left the church oh, okay. service and I didn't hear from my mom, but my little sister checked me. Yeah. To let me know that my dad has been diagnosed with COVID. Now, Harbor Chase just called me yeah. and said, Dad's in quarantine. Yeah. I'm not allowed to break that quarantine. Yeah. I'm not allowed to go see my dad right now. Yeah. And they're providing him the medication he needs yeah. and keeping an eye on him. Because yeah. honestly, if Dad was at home living alone, had COVID with just Mom, I ain't sure anything's okay. Yeah. But he's got doctors, nurses, and, and caretakers there that are at the hospital. So, I mean, at that hospital, at the yeah, assisted the, living. Yeah. So he's got a lot more care there than he ever would have alone. So, all right. So, uh-huh. Yeah, so that's what my dad's doing. Is he 
say how he's doing? Does he, does he real, like, can you tell he has COVID? Are there signs here sometimes? Happy birthday. Thank you, thank you. He's coughing. He's coughing. He has congestion. Okay. So that is, a, yeah, coughing and congestion. How bad it is, they're not telling me. Yeah. Obviously, they didn't, they didn't take him to the hospital and put him on a respirator. Okay. See, they're all different levels of, uh, yeah, of health going. concern. Yeah. Okay. So that didn't happen. But yesterday, I, I was for the first time ever, I was banned for a year from entering the mall. From where? Entering the mall. Entering the mall. Why? Well, I had I had a meet and greet I was doing at a mall. Uh -huh. And I was going to have people meet me 